The color of plugs, remember the best step, all the plugs you'll see for Lakers a lot of times are that blue and green. That frog colored quick fish that my buddy was using. If you have bright clear conditions in that lake, like all our lakes around here, you can run the chrome colored stuff. Remember, just like fishing um, for the salmon or any of it, at first light we troll glow, okay? Then once the light starts to get better, depending on our depth, we can go to a, a, maybe a green or a chrome. I'll take you through the best thing way me to, to break it down for you is when I salmon fish because it makes the most sense. And I use the same principles when I fish for the Lakers and the trout. I did a show on the, on the salmon up at Vancouver Island and I talked about flashers and I got a bunch of emails and guys going, you know, I've fished for a long time and I never even thought about it. The flasher setup. And it's how I would do, it's all of my plugs in the same, it's all the same when I troll plugs for the trout and for um, lakers and the salmon and whatnot. When I start out in the morning, when you're salmon fishing over on the ocean, even here inland in the rivers, it's always dark. You're out there, you got that first light. Uh, you always got to get there, that's when the bite starts. Okay. So what you do is typically your setup is going to be a glow flasher. If we're talking flashers, and if you're running a hoochie or a helmeted herring, the helmet is glow or the hoochie's glow because glow shows up, remember, low light conditions. Well, what happens is they go out and they do the same. Why does the bite stop? Man, they just quit biting. Man, don't think that way. They just quit taking what you were offering. As it gets to mid morning and our light gets up, right? Remember the angle of the sun now is starting to get into the water. It's not reflecting as much. Then we will go to a bait that is chrome finish. Chrome finish. Our flasher now, or our hoochie, excuse me, or our helmet, will go to just a straight green or blue, depending on conditions or whatever, depth. Once the sun gets directly high, I take the chrome one off. I take the chrome flasher off. I go to one of those ones that's a broken reflective. It's kind of dull. It's like a matte finish. It's got all the little tiny squares on it. You guys know what I'm talking about? Not the flashy one. And my hoochie will go to more of a, maybe I just have a green stripe running through a white bait. I tame it down. Because the light is extremely high, they can see excellent. Then go on the back side, sun's starting to go down. I put the chrome on. It gets down low to the evening, I put the glow back on. All the time I'm doing this, I'm dropping my depth down to fall the salmon. Because as it gets brighter, they go down. You may start 15 feet, end up at 90 to 100 feet in the hot part of the day, bright part of the day. Here's what happens. Remember when we talked about the baits? We talked about a chrome bait versus a painted bait versus a clear crankbait. It's the same principle. It's a global principle. When they first are out there in the morning, the light's low, they can't see as well the glow. Boom, they can see it. Now all of a sudden I got light, the glow's not showing up as well. So I put on the chrome to grab as much light as I can to throw it out there to bring them in. Then what happens once the lights get straight up and it gets good penetration, penetration, that flash is too much. It is too bright. Now that broken flasher, that matte finish flasher, it's kicking out a little light, not as much. The hoochie now is a little more tame. Once I start to lose the light, I get the chrome out to pick up the light. The light goes down more, I put the glow on. You don't make the change. This thing worked and now it quit. Same thing with your plugs. Any of it, guys. It's the same principle. They just quit biting. Well, when the sun's high, when a, when a blue, the uh, light uh, less than a green. No, blue is blue is more visible than green. Oh. But what you want to do is take it, take like a hoochie. You see the ones with just a little strip of green running through them. Maybe they're white, or maybe a pink one. Something that's more tame. When you have excellent light, you want to tame everything down. So it's the same principle with the plugs. And use a flat fish, most common thing that guys troll. In the morning we start out, we're fishing a thermal climb, we know there's fish there, it's first light, I got a glow one on. The sun comes up, I put a chrome one on. 
It gets right up above me. I go to a matte finish, green or frog colored. As it goes down, I go back to chrome. As I go into the evening, I go to glow. A little trick if you're going to troll those. Why people don't do this, I don't know. When you go fishing for salmon, what do you do? Well, I was using a banana plug and it was, pl it was wrapped with a sardine or a herring. Guys tell me all the time, Seth, do you put a chunk of squaw meat or sucker meat, pike minnow meat, on your drop shot? I do not. I just let the center of the Berkeley power bait do the work. I don't put anything on there. It's plenty enough. Every guy that goes out there and trolls gets his zero aught dodger. The thing on the back tells him to go 14 to 16 inches and he attaches his fly or his hoochie and he puts a strip of pike minnow meat on there because that's the only way you can catch them. Right? Laker guys? Roger? I don't put bait on them. Okay. But you guys look, look at a fly, that's what they show on the back. But I have a secret. Okay. <laughs> He's a fisherman, he's got secrets. Okay. If you troll your plug, and you want to use the pike minnow or the sucker, wrap it just like you would a salmon plug. Now you've got that scent on there. If you wrap your plugs, you're going to catch a lot more fish. The banana plugs, just like you would do for salmon. Coming up on the website, you guys will see how to do that. Now I want to talk really briefly flashers, because when we get into trout, we're going to talk about it. And I'm trying to kind of encompass a bunch of things here, guys, because this all overlaps. How long should your leader be behind your dodger if you're fishing for lake trout? Close, not quiet. Who in here is a diehard salmon fisherman? Ken, how long should your f distance behind your flasher be? It varies 30 to 40 feet. 30 to 40 feet, inches. I'm helping him out. He's tired. I'm helping him. He's tired. All right. Here's the thing. I hate when they say, man, you got to be sick. I was 62 inches behind. That was the magic number. Good grief, here we go with the 2.2 miles an hour again. If a fish is aggressive, when you, when you put that flasher down, or that dodger, dodger does this. Flasher does this, loops. Real quick difference for you, okay? As that thing swings around or it goes back and forth, the shorter this distance is, the more it whips the fly. Okay? If a fish is active, he's going to take things a little faster rate, correct? They started out biting, and then they quit. And I was using my zero-aught dodger. I had 16 inches, and I had my fly and hoochie. It worked like a bandit. Well, did you change this as the day progressed? Well, no, that glow always works. Well, did you tame the fly down and change it? No, I got a glow fly. It always works. Well, always for some is not always for me. Did you make your leader length longer? Huh? What? <laughs> the fly package says 14 to 16 inches. For a coho, you go 32 to 41. For a Chinook, you may go 48 to 60. Guess what? Some days when I'm Chinook fishing, I may go seven feet. Huh. <laughs> As they become less active, the attractor needs to become farther away. It imparts less action to this. This distance here, less action, also makes them less afraid, less spooked by this. Here. There is no set amount. The starting point for me is to tie it up and go two and a half times around, howdy doody. I didn't get a bite, guess what? Change my color, but I know that I should have a glow on now because the light's such and such. I should have this fly on, this should be working. Hmm, pressure may be off. 
maybe I need to stretch this out. There's always a reason. My buddy was out fishing me. We had the same setup. No, you didn't. I guarantee you didn't have the setup. I guarantee it. Always be switching it up. There's never a set rule. Yeah. There's You're wrong. The biggest thing that I'll stand up is the distance between, of course, not everybody's going to use a rigger, but the distance between back from the rigger, it makes up big, big difference. Why is that? Because I'm changing the speed. Well, you're changing the speed. You're, you're going back from the rigger. You're getting this cable or this ball or however you're rigging it is putting the disturbance into the water. When you get further away from it, they go, oh, I'm going to investigate it. Check it out a little bit. It's the same principle. You're getting away from the disturbance. Guys, I, I've had salmon in the ocean. I threw the thing over the side. It's, the, the flasher is skipping on the side of the boat, and it's like right here. Wham! I mean, guess what? We don't need a downrigger. We'll just hold it like this. <laughs> I mean, it can happen. Then all of a sudden, in an hour, they're not biting. Well, you just got to change up. They were super aggressive. Now they're not. What a lot go with the, their activity during the light of the day, right? Yep. And it just depends, Brian, on feed times. You know, ocean, we're talking tides and something I totally different. But as, as it gets brighter, they just tend to become more neutral to negative. So the leaders would get longer. The Le leaders get longer. Your colors get more matte, not as aggressive. Yes. And then as it phases back into the lower light, we start changing it up. So you could almost have rigs made. You could. Hook them on and go, exactly, if you're wanting to get out there quick. You guys, if you ever watch a show and you watch a guy in the Great Lakes that is a great salmon troller, don't pay attention to the rods and all that. Look in the background. You will see hundreds of spoons. When you go to a guide boat on Pond A, look at the flies in there. You'll see hundreds of flies. And those flies to him mean at this time of day, at this time of day, and at this time of day. Same way with the spoons. Same principle. I got coyote spoons, guys, piles of them. And they're all different colors. Some are matte, some are chrome, some have reflection, some have glow. It's all a principle. Where does gold brass fit in there? That's a low, low light, <coughs> muddy, stained water. Exactly. Yep. Chrome will pick up more reflective light. If you have less light in the sky or you have stained water. Yep, chrome and brass will. Nickel. Yep. You guys are laughing back there. Is my zipper done? No. All right. Just checking. I got to check. Some people don't help me. No, you wouldn't. You'd just film it and then we'd be down in the editing room going, dude, your fly was open, man. That was funny. And I'd look over and grab you on the shoulder and say, no, it's funnier than that. And you're fired. <laughs> There you go. So, <laughs> for the Lakers, yes. I don't, it's all plugs for me, guys. I did that for so many years. It's all plugs for me. So, that's just, if I'm going to go for big fish, I'm running plugs. I'm running plugs. Like I said, when we put a hook on that OOT Dodger, that OOT Dodger, you know, they're that big, and caught fish that were six, seven pounds. Okay, they'll eat big things. They'll eat big stuff, so I like to present the plug. Present the plug, mix the speed up, try to get in that thermocline spot where I'm marking them, and run it through fast, slow, change it up, and that's how I like to troll for them. Okay. A Lakers, are we all pretty good on that, guys? Yeah. We all good, everybody happy? No. Okay. <laughs> Nobody's happy. I hear a lot of, some of you guys ran into me at the boat show and stuff. Oh, man, I'm going to have to retrain the way I fish. Yes. No, well, no, you're not. Because you've got a lot of experience. All you're going to do is take and adapt, and you're just going to apply. Okay? You all are here. You all can catch fish. It's just now applying the rules. You're going to take what you've learned and add to it. Because there's always a situation, guys. I don't care how many books are written, how many times you come to a seminar and you listen to me, there's always exceptions. There's always exceptions. Fishing is not a science. It's applying knowledge. Okay, but there are times when just some crazy stuff happens and you go, why is that? It just happens. 
And those that are good will constantly be changing. Do you get, do you get in the boat with Chad and I? My dash is gross. Chad takes pictures of it to forward to his buddy. Look at this stuff, man. He's got this everywhere. Because I'm a spaz like that. It's a constant, what is going to happen? What is, I need, what is it? What is it? What is it? I'm paying Mickey and Randy to sit out there and look pretty for the ladies while I'm working my butt off. And let me tell you what, the ladies don't come around. Look at the crew. So anyway, all right. Change your lure change your That's right. Maybe they're wearing too much gold. There's a new guy back here, Brandon, and he's got one of those kind that lays out on the back that causes you guys not to fish. Yeah, so tough for him, right? 